Hi there and welcome to this video about Solid Thinking Compose. Today we're gonna take a look at 2D Convection, which is the sixth step of the 12 steps to Navi Stokes. All right, um, we have here the notebook from Lorena Baba with step six and the thing which changes from step five, step five is linear convection. Here we used a C as a constant for both the derivatives of the udx and the udy. And this changes now because we are using not anymore a constant in here, but the variable directly. So it's the udt plus u times the udx plus, plus v times the udy. And v is another uh, variable which has its own equation. So we have two equations which are coupled because we're using v in the equation for u and u in the equation for v so they cannot be solved independently steps are the same we discretizing the equations and solving for the next um, variable in time so u n plus one from i j equals something and v from n plus one and from i comma j equals the another equation and we have initial conditions which are the same as in step five. So we have a bunch of ones in a row in a in a grid, and we have some twos in the middle. And we have a boundary conditions as we cannot compute the edges because the edges um, the, we don't have a, a revolving boundary condition saying that the last element uses as the member next the first element for example so we just say that the the, the edges are ones so in boundary condition u equals one and v equals one for x equals zero or two or y equals zero or two so the edges all around are set to one in each iteration of um, the time step loop. All right, without further ado, let's get into the code. I have it right here. So I have imported the same stuff as in step five without the time because now we don't make a, um, a, a comparison between two different uh, algorithms, but we're just using the array calculation. So we have the variable declarations, which we can be, which can be changed to see what effects it has. We have the initial boundary, uh, the initial conditions, which are the ones and the twos. And now we are plotting the initial conditions. And as said in the step number five, we have to use for that a mesh grid to just generate a grid of x and y values. And we have to use um, the ax as a plotting um, with, with a projection uh, type of 3D. And we use a surface plot in here with the X and Ys from the mesh grid and a column map. Column map could be um, problematic in Solid Thinking Compose. I noticed that, that it threw me an error on the column map, it didn't know it. And I have to update um, matplotlib. How do you do that? please uh, refer to step number five. I did that there. All right, now to the calculation. So we have a calculation for our time loops and we just copy our uh, initial values or the actual uh, values into a, a second array, which we can now use for the calculation of the, of the next time step, which we are inserting into the array u and v. So you notice this array um, syntax. So you, we have a lot of column signs. And in this case, one is the second element because array indexing starts from zero. And we have two indices. So you can think of as i and j, which are the rows and the columns. Maybe I just quickly draw that up for you. So let's say we have a grid, which looks like this. And we have i changing here and j changing here. And then, for example, this right here would be 0, 0, and 1, 1 would be this element. You see now that this 
is the edge. And we're just calculating starting from one to all elements. So also this element, because that is what, what um, the syntax is saying. So u i uh, nonsense one with this colon and one colon means we're starting here and we're going row wise all the way up to there so to the last elements but i think it's not inclusive i'm not quite sure it could be that um, with the list syntax it that it is not inclusive so then it would stop right here which would be the more preferable way um, to do it but it doesn't matter because we are setting with the boundary condition the edges are set in here to one um, so you don't have ever a null pointer exception or something like this um, all right maybe just google that quickly not that I'm talking any rubbish. It is um, Python array syntax inclusive. Well, there was this, um, there was this page. Which was really good on arrays. I guess it was this one. Yeah. And there you have five column. It's a list from just five to the end of that list. And the other way around, so column five is not including the fifth element. So, all right, so then it is like I first said, you have your calculation done until the last point, which is not problematic because um, we have, um, we don't use i plus one or j plus one. So it's not problematic. Because what would you do with i plus 1 right over here? Because so i plus 1, this doesn't exist. All right, and yeah, that's about it for the syntax. So you have, going back to the code, you have your, your calculation. You're using the temporary copy. And the only thing I changed from Lorena Barber's code is I'm I changed the index because I think it doesn't matter after all because it's a um, as a symmetric problem. But as you refer to this equation right over here, the next step in time is calculated by u i minus one and j minus one. So first term i minus one and the second term j minus one. And as you look down here, this is the original code from Marina Barba. You have here the first term, un, and she's, she's changing the, the second index. So she's referring in her list to the second index being the row. And I think that's not common. So I changed that. I, I put this colon minus one up here and one colon up here. So it's like this here. And I did that respectively with the, the second equation. Well, we can discuss that. Maybe I, I'm also wrong on this. I, but I but, um, think that the results look, look similar. All right, um, here your boundary conditions are set because you want to set all the edges to one. So all elements which are zero at i and all the other elements in j are set to one and similar to to the other values and yeah after that we have your final plotting 
of your calculated um, array, which is done similarly to the to the one with the initial conditions. And I would say we just run it. See the difference. So we have here the initial conditions, and we have here the propagated wave. All right, let's maybe quickly change that just for the for the uh, in order to compare that. So this is the original code. Oh. We have to be very important, uh, very uh, careful with tabs. I just simply cut this for a moment. Play it out. All right, it looks very similar. So because you better just it's a symmetric problem and we're just um, changing the indices. What my rows are are her columns, and otherwise, you know, it doesn't make any changes. All right. Um, that's it for step number six. If you have any questions, please feel free to put a comment down below the video. And I'm happy to discuss to discuss with you what you think about how it's right to to address the indices on here. And thanks for watching.